poster art, chalk stenciling, sticker bombing. You may see your favourite bands on these mediums across the city advertising upcoming releases and tours, but do you actually know how they got there? We follow Mr X on a night out of music postering in the city, just to find out exactly what goes on behind the art of guerrilla marketing of music. In case you're wondering, Mr X is not his real name. Due to the highly secretive nature of the act of music postering often done under the cover of darkness, there are often many laws that can deem the act slightly illegal. Hence, a pseudonym has been used to protect the identity of those involved. I'm here with Mr X who specialises in music guerrilla marketing around Melbourne. So can you tell me a little bit more about postering and chalk stenciling around Melbourne? All of that falls under what you call guerrilla marketing, which is basically any marketing tact that you take, which is unexpected, a little bit outside the norm. Like we, it's not a billboard, it's not a television ad. It's something that can be in your face. It's something where you can piggyback off other people's work, which it makes it suit, really suited for bands, small businesses, entrepreneurs, basically anyone who wants to get impact in the market without much money and having a bit of a surprising element to it. So do you think it's a really effective way of promoting your band and getting music out there? Yeah, yeah, it's very effective if you've got a bit more of a profile, but it's something that you should always, um, no one method's the be all and the end all. It's the sort of the way, I guess, society's gone now. You really need that double whammy of the old traditional media, whether it's print, a bit of gorilla, and also digital, social, you just have to do everything you possibly can. It's just such a fast changing landscape out there, you've got to adapt and cover every base. So tell me a little bit more about the guidelines you have to follow, or is it in fact a bit more fluid than that? Like is it considered graffiti to the government? They do consider it graffiti, or that's very hard to prove, so it's more littering. But um, no, there's, there's no real guideline. There's only, I think in each, each area, there's only a couple of legal poster spots which get covered pretty quickly. So people have to, whether they're companies or independent artists, productions, whatever, they have to go out any way they can to get it out there. But personally, I agree. I think it's sort of the colour on the streets that makes what Melbourne what it is. So tell me a little bit more about chalk stenciling and sticker bombing. Well, chalk stenciling has been very popular lately, the last couple of years, to the fact where The Age have done campaigns with, with chalk stenciling. It's popular because it's non-permanent. So councils have tried to argue it's graffiti, but if it washes off in the rain, it's not. It's no different to someone chalking you know, up for their garage sale. So if he's dropping down a stencil, hitting it with special chalk. Sticker bombing, it's really sort of getting it out there on street furniture, bins, street poles, and that one's very popular for people who want to get that, I guess, street edge to what they're doing to get that real, real credible buzz. Do you have any favourite campaigns that you've worked on? The Catherine Devaney one was really good fun because that was a very provocative message and we wanted to push some buttons and see what happened. She did a show at the comedy festival called um, God is Bullshit and we had a stencil saying, made up to look like a Christian flyer, you know, big happy rays of sun and that sort of stuff. And it was asked that we dropped it up, we drop it out front of as many churches as possible. The only thing that really happened is they got scrubbed out within about five minutes. So that wasn't the most effective campaign, but it was, it was pretty good fun. <laughs> So there's a lot more than what meets the eye behind our posters on our walls and buildings. It's a hidden element of the Melbourne music scene that while many of us take it for granted, you can be assured that it will be here to stay.